Let's show you how tonight played out. And it started in spectacular fashion with Tyler Algier getting the ball. And uh, he makes a move here. Isaac Rex a block there. The official gave a block. And uh, David, he's off to the races. Off to the races. 14 carries for 123 yards. But like you said, Mason Wakey in the mix, Rex in the mix, the ref in the mix right there. <laughs> I mean, everyone's blocking their tails off. Algier, 14 of 123. He averaged only 8.8 .8 per carry. Is that, is that good? He came into the game averaging over six yards a carry. So, you know, a run like that doesn't hurt that per carry average. What a great night for Tyler. Second quarter, Jake Oldroyd had trouble with some extra points tonight, but nine of nine now on the season kicking field goals. BYU takes a 10-3 lead. And they get some opportunities here, Blaine, where they just didn't cash in because the defense did its job in creating turnovers. When your defense gives you the ball on a short field, you have to get points and pressure coming. These young quarterbacks, they really wanted to flush out of the pocket, forces it in here. The ball was tipped by Isaiah Heron and the Christensen comes up with a catch. What a great catch and good concentration. You and I were talking, we watched this and we're like, Van Buren hits him. Hey, guess what? You just turn the ball over. Don't act like such a bad man. Later, just before halftime, Zach Wilson with the opportunity and in goes his touchdown. He's got nine, the most out of any running back in college football. Easy play call, you motion out the back and then you just tuck it in for the quarterback keeper. Blocked extra point, that snaps a streak of 72 consecutive, which was a school record. How about Kyrie's Tonga chasing down the quarterback, forcing a fumble. BYU's got another chance before halftime. It's a pure hustle play right there with Kyrie's Tonga. You'd love to see the big boy out there love running. That, right? love Those it. scouts love that play. Third quarter, Cougs come out firing, and there's Rex with the touchdown pass. And Rex wasn't done either. Once Romney and Milne started making plays, the tight end spot opens right up. There's touchdown number two. How about a 6'6", 250-pound guy that can either post you up on the goal line or go run a seam and pirouette around and catch the ball? He's really athletic, and he's a big dude. BYU goes for two, and watch Neil Powell here, David. Yeah, Neil Powell, I mean, this is about as good as it gets. You get into the end zone, you stop right there on the goal line, you post up, a big body Neil Powell is able to block out the defender. Easy pass and catch from Zach Wilson. We saw Lapini Katoa get banged up late in the game. Here he goes 20 yards into the end zone. It's 38 to 3, and this game is over. I think it was over before this, <laughs> but, but this just put the nail in the coffin for sure. And uh, BYU, when they ran downhill tonight, they had more success. When they tried to run the stretch, uh, side to side, they didn't have much success. Fourth quarter, here's Wilson back to Pau. They may change this to a touchdown yeah, pass. You be, you be the judge. Did that go backward did, or, or was it, it like it was forward. It forward? They called it a run. We'll see if that gets changed. It's 45-3. And how about Cade Finnegan? Back from his church mission, wanted to play at BYU. His dad played at BYU, recruited to Boise State. He's playing because of the injury to Sears and uh, a couple of good moments for uh, the Fennigan family. Yeah, a guy that came out of Texas before his mission is uh, committed to North Texas and then had offers from USC and Boise State. Well, it would be nice to have him here. Algier in the end zone for another touchdown, and that just one seemed just like it was too easy there. And uh, Brian Harson, Kalani Sataki, BYU's now beaten Boise State two straight. They win it 51 17. And how about these numbers?